Yeah. What about those who have moved on, those spirits, those souls that are gone? Where do they go? Okay, well, I, I, I think there are different level, places souls can go. Some people say souls can pass to the moon. Lower souls who haven't evolved pass right. to the moon. John Lear thinks there's a storage shed of souls up there. Yeah, and other that? people have described... Adi Da describes beings there that feed off human souls. Gurdjieff says when anything organic dies, that certain energy, soul energy, feeds the moon. So people might pass to the moon, they might haunt the earth. I believe the paradise worlds are in the levels of the upper atmosphere. And then I believe there are the spiritual worlds in the sun. I believe there are a world related like on the planets but in the more in the astral realm uh, but there are levels that could be very dangerous for people to be in right yes and uh, yes yeah, I mean I think there I believe in the existence of hellish type realms oh, that yeah. people can be Rem drawn remember into. the movie ghost that was an amazing movie yes those creatures that would come up when somebody had died yeah. They'd grab them and take them. Well, stay with us, Christopher. We're going to open up the phone lines for you next hour. It's our final hour with you. So take advantage, and we'll uh, continue calls, of course. Fascinating, fascinating topics. How important for you to understand all this uh, was your training as a uh, forensic psychologist, let's say? Um, well... Uh, absolutely against everything I've learned. In fact, everything I learned in the mainstream of modern psychology, I now regard uh, as wrong, fundamentally mistaken. Like, psychology de today is defined as the science of behavior and the mind. They have no psychology of the heart and soul. They have the complete wrong understanding of consciousness. They have the wrong understanding of the nature of self. They don't think we have a self. They think the self-experience is produced up in portions of the cortex rather than there being any self within the heart. So I see the whole of mainstream modern psychology as fundamentally mistaken. I believe the planets um, and astrology affects our essence. Like, the most important thing I think in astrology is the structure of the elements and understanding what kind of element you are and I believe our essence is, t is interconnected to the planetary life, that, that, that influences us in the subtle dimensions. Well, thank you. See, most, we, we want to learn to live in the consciousness of the heart. So as you go about your day, try to remember to come back to being present here now, wherever you are, and connect with your breathing. Your soul life is connected to your breath. There's four levels to your breath and four levels to your soul. So when you come back, just being present and to connect with your breath. And I tap myself over the heart space sometimes. So I can feel that brings my attention to that area. And try to experience yourself being in your heart. Your heart space is empty in ways. In a way, there's, in mystical teachings, there's a form of nothingness at the heart of being. In a way, there's a vacated space within your heart. This is described in Kabbalah and Judaism. There's a hollow within the heart. So in a way, we want to center in our heart. So I actually tap myself over the heart and try to be centered in my heart space. And the mystics say self-realization, which is the attainment of the next level of awakening, involves the disillusion of the false mind into the lotus of the heart. So more and more, you, in a way, the, the turning of the mind is an obstacle to consciousness. You want to lessen or still the turning of the mind and learn to be more centered in your breath and, and tap yourself over the chest, try to feel awakened in your heart. And remember yourself. I practice self-remembering, meaning as I go about my life, I make efforts every day to be waking up here and waking up there to try to increase my wakefulness and, and build on that. I was listening earlier how you were saying how the hearts relate, uh, connect with the mind and to the spirit. I had a heart transplant two years ago, mm -hmm. and I was curious why I went, to, if that's the case, why wouldn't I have noticed a lot of changes in my mind and thinking and whatnot? Yeah, well, I think your, your memory is really in the sub more subtle fields, information fields, um, that the, the heart um, 
Yeah, it's not in the, the actual matter of the heart, but it's in the subtle fields that interpenetrate the heart. So your memory is in this deeper the, uh, field information. So even though your heart might be replaced, I mean, there are a lot of paranormal experiences that people have with heart transplants. Did you have any of those type experiences? Such like? Have you ever read uh, Sylvia uh, Brown's book called The Change of Heart? No. Uh, well, you might look at that, uh, and it's reported, um, a number of people of have written about this, All peop where someone receives someone else's heart, but, and, but they have experiences that connect them to the donor, or visions of the donor, or they, it changes their own psychological makeup. She's one lady who's written about this. Uh, it's discussed also in the Hearts Code by Paul Pearsall. But it's a good question, and... and I don't, I mean, I, I don't really want to pretend that I understand all these mysteries. You know, I'm still an explorer and trying to understand it, but it's a good question. Why don't, why doesn't changing the heart then change our personal identity and memory? And I'm saying it's because that is more established in the zero point fields. And that, the material heart is changing, but the deeper, the psychical heart is, is still your own psychical heart. You know, there have been some incredible stories, Christopher, of people who have had transplants, organs, of course, from uh, people, and who have passed on in most cases. And people generally take on either their personality or get some sights. You know, it's been made into a couple great movies. Yeah. But it's very strange. Yeah, it shows in the way that the heart donated by someone still seems connected to the soul life of that person. That's what it suggests. And it happens with other organs. I mean, sometimes change, uh, I think kidney, transplanted kidney, it can affect your food preferences and things. We, we don't really understand the memory, um, where memory is stored. In a way, memory seems inherent actually to matter, like within matter. It's like where you, you're having Sheldrake on tomorrow. He's uh, mm -hmm. such an important theorist. And, and actually, his model is like there's this group mind, and that's in the subtle fields. So the memory is really in the subtle fields. It's not that memory is recorded in cell assembly somewhere in the brain. It's more that it's inherent to within the nature of matter. By the way, that book, A Change of Heart, it's Claire Sylvia. It's Claire Sylvia. Not Thank Sylvia. you. I wanted to bring up about the holographic universe. Um, I've heard people talk about the holographic universe and that we're all yeah, part of the um, Yeah, I've, I've studied the making holograms, and what doesn't seem to be brought forward is the aspect of the viewer's unique perspective of that whole, or that the person's unique perspective of the universe might be due to their heart resonance frequency, or like you were saying, like the zero field that's unique to them. And when you make a hologram, there's two different kind of basic types. There's transmission and there's projection holograms. And again, yeah. people don't really refer to or bring that aspect when they talk about the holographic universe. And I kind of think, you know, that's the difference between uh, projection and transmission when we're kind of talking about psychology. And I was wondering if you want, had a take on this, and I'll hang up and listen off the air. Thank well, you. Well, no, hold on. And, and hold on. Still there? Like, uh, interesting uh, yeah, question. Sorry. And one thing in response to Talbot's book and the holographic paradigm in general is that most of the people who use use the holographic paradigm, don't think there is any interior source of coherent light. Like when you do holographic photography, you have a point, a laser light, and that provides a source of coherent light. Now, Carl Trieblum says there are no laser beams in the head. No, none of the holographers think that we have an interior source of coherent light. So when well, I say there's coding. a Jiva Atma within the heart, this is a source of coherent light, which is the basis for creating holographic experience. Yeah, That's when not in Talbot. Talbot also doesn't have to... this concept of there being a coherent light source. Now, I haven't well, I really answered your question, but I, I want to bring that up. Sorry. Oh, no, no, the other part was the transmission and projection holograms, like, like yeah. psychology. Um, see, I think... Creation is projected around the central point out of the physics of light within this vacated space in the heart. And reality is spun around that. It's hard really to explain it. Um, because it's a very complex kind of subject. So the difference between, see, I think our reality is projected around the central point. 
Explain that. And, and it's our we're lit up from within, within, without. Explain that. Um, well, see, it's like Blavatsky says, the z zero points are the materials by which the gods and other invisible powers clothe themselves in bodies. I say at the core of your being, you have a zero point center, and around that, that's surrounded by different bodies which um, are created out of the quantum vacuum due to the spin properties of your monadic essence. I mean, I haven't had time to... I believe that we have a monadic essence that exists in seven-dimensional hyperspace. And this has certain spin properties, and the spin properties of that monadic essence is like a kalubi yao space in modern physics. It, it creates material bodies surrounding that central point. And, and it's the interaction of light emerging from within that illuminates the matters of these 